please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to Omegon 2. I'm going to preface this video before we begin by saying if you hear any random building noises, my next door neighbor is having a dormer put on and they are quite loud. Even from my cabin, you can hear it. Today we're going to be looking at two videos from Jeffrey Marsh. Now we've covered Jeffrey Marsh before. They're a rather amusing individual that I still cannot believe is still going and is still getting reasonable views considering the amount of heat they get when they are talking to children in their content, in a ridiculously very forced, soft, patronizing voice. Something about Jeffrey Marsh's mannerisms has rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way for quite some time. More notably, libs of TikTok. Jeffrey Marsh has changed their uh, bio on their TikTok to include a reference to that in fact. Donate to help me keep upsetting bigots like libs of TT. TikTok that is. I find that fascinating because the libs of TikTok account typically just shows you news content. The more aggressive opinions comes from the user on her personal Twitter account. Libs of TikTok does a great job of demonstrating the moronic nature of many clout chasers on TikTok. Whether you be somebody that is rotund, believe in some form of identity politics, you push progressive politics that go too far, too fast, or immigration problems, education issues, the list really does go on. Yes, they are obviously more of a conservative type, you can tell, but they're highlighting the reductio ad absurdum nature of TikTok and the fact that many on that platform don't realize just how cancerous they are until they go on the defensive when they get called out and people find out who they are on TikTok within a matter of moments. So, the first video was tweeted out by Libs of TikTok and it is captioned, Jeffrey Marsh is doing what he does best, telling kids on TikTok to disrespect and cut off contact with their parents, groomer in chief. Hi love, here are three ways to disrespect your elders. While I've no doubt this is a cute way of trying to make a joke out of something, uh, I would advise against anyone disrespecting their elders. It is a guaranteed way in many areas of this planet, many cultures, many societies, of getting your teeth kicked in by the elder. There is a nanny state enthusiasm when it comes to children these days to allow them to express themselves as fully as you think they should. In the vast majority of countries on this planet though, that is not the case. It is a very westernized interpretation. You will find in many other countries, some of which are in fact in the west, that they fundamentally disagree with this idea. Please do not disrespect your elders. It only sets you up for a lifetime of loneliness because you are not learning the very basic premise of respect at a young age that you should have instilled, installed into your mind from the very beginning. So if you're dealing with a narcissistic parent or a bullying boss at work, you need to one, play innocent. If you are dealing with a narcissistic parent, it is still not your place to deal with the parent. Unfortunately for you, if your parent is narcissistic, and there are many who are, some more subtle, others more prideful, ego-driven. It is not your place as the child to deal with them. The adult side of dealing with a boss, oh, now this is a brave one because in some countries, workers do in fact have rights. But if you want to progress yourself and your career, the last thing you want to do is play your boss in some way or try and tear them down in some other way or try and be cute about it in some way because a lot of bosses got there by being snakes. They will see right through you. I think you're trying to be smarter than you are. This this is not good advice already. There's some sort of secret code or language they're using to try to get you to do what they want. And all you need to do is ask, what do you mean? I don't get it. Could you explain that? Oh no, you're trying to get them fired. Questions in a cutesy way are often seen as condescending from the person asking the questions, i.e. yourself or the employee or the child speaking to the parent. The child is going to lose a lot of privileges when they do that. Some parents, of course, nurturing, yes, but if you're dealing with a narcissistic parent or somebody who is quite strict, you'll find they're not as inclined to show an iota of patience. In the case of a boss, you will have already been trained to do your job, so no, they won't. No, these questions are going to get you put on report. 
suspended and or fired. Do be a bit careful people, don't listen to Jeffrey Marsh's advice. I often tell people to do what is called play the game. Play the game involves a level of politics. You've got to be able to read and understand the person you are working with. My advice to you is if you want to keep your job and not go any further, keep your head down and focus on your job. If you want to go somewhere within this occupation, you have to play politics. If you want to use this as a stepping stone for a different job, do the first and the second until you've got a new job. And if you're dealing with a parent like that, I hope the other ones around are nowhere near as bad. Because asking questions like that with two parents like that, ooh, I feel like the 80s and 90s would get an electric boogaloo of their own. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Number two, feel no guilt. How is this one a point? If dealing with a parent, parents, if they're narcissistic, are going to make you feel guilty anyway. Children are malleable and vulnerable and therefore it is not overly difficult to make a child feel guilt. Suppressing that would take a very different level of skill for a child. If you're dealing with a boss, the boss, well, is the boss. While a tautology, if you try and play them and they realize they're going to ruin you. These odd little bits of advice for dealing with your elders is a rather peculiar set of options. I've yet to be impressed by any of them just yet, but I can hardly wait for this explanation. Bullies and narcissists use guilt as leverage, and if you refuse to feel guilty, it doesn't matter what you do or what they do or say. So now we're calling the narcissistic parent bully and the boss a bully. If the boss is actively bullying you, you go straight to HR, you go around them. It is not remotely comparable to that of a narcissistic boss. As far as the child and a parent go, I mean, if you've got a decent family structure, you could go to the grandparent, but your options are limited, aren't they? And your explanation does not help them at all. I think if anything, it's going to cause an increase in DV cases. Your advice is trash. And number three, limit contact. Don't do extra. Don't go above and beyond. Don't show up constantly, consistently, and all the time sacrificing your life for their agenda. Okay, so we can tackle this two separate ways. Limiting contact when it comes to a parent and a child. Good luck with that. I've seen a massive increase in overly attached parents who can't seem to fathom the concept that their child needs personal space. Well done, Jeffrey. You're a moron. Second, employment. Limit contact. In the context of perhaps being offered additional overtime, there may be a point with the cost of living going up. Many are going to want to do the overtime because they need to pay their bills or because they do long hours anyway. Therefore, their exposure is based on a contract that they signed when they took up that occupation. For whatever reason, they took up that occupation. Your advice is absolute dog plop and doesn't show how you can disrespect your elders in a way that could be beneficial to you. Okay, now video number two is a direct response to Libs of TikTok because the Libs of TikTok gave a speech at a school or college place and couldn't answer a question. Jeffrey loved this and was salivating. So Jeffrey Marsh had to put this on TikTok. Here is Haya Rychik, who runs Libs of TikTok, speaking at a university. It's a satisfying video to watch because the students turn the tables on her. She does speaking gigs, she monetizes her tweets, she makes a lot of money off of making trans people's lives quite difficult and unsafe. Let's listen to it together. Just before we do, I want to make it quite clear that I do not agree entirely with Jeffrey Marsh here. If you put opinions in the public domain and expect to do so without any repercussions, you are deluded and you need to have that dealt with. Many people on social media say something that is so fundamentally stupid, immoral, illegal, that it has to be called out. It's why commentary even exists in the first place. On Twitter, you will see a lot more of it now because people are sick and tired. The window is shifting and more people are getting slapped for it. Figuratively, not literally. That is not the fault of the person calling it out. That really isn't. Of course, the extreme nature of many online doesn't help, but the blame does not fall at the feet of the people who call out those who make bad ideas a possibility and or reality. In the case of Libs of TikTok or the person who runs it, the one thing I can tell from the speaking engagements I've seen videos of them doing, in the full context, and it's vitally important to have the full context, they're not a natural speaker. They have a similar anxiety twitch that I have where they fidget. So I can tell 
I'll link the full context by the way down below, it's from a 40 minute speaking engagement. Vitally important you have access to all of it so you can see for yourself. But the shorter clip is all that matters to Jeffrey. Intellectual Dishonesty 101. Tasty. I do. Uh, how do you define wokeness? Wokeness is the destruction of normalcy and and um, <laughs> Two things. You can define wokeness. It's somewhat disappointing that Libs of TikTok failed fundamentally to do that. She's not a natural speaker and she bombed at this quite badly. When somebody who was intersex later in the video that I've linked down below, it ended up getting debunked comments that Libs of TikTok made by an audience member. It wasn't a great performance and she'd need to improve if she intends to do this more often. A short answer for what wokeness is typically considered is the quality of being alert to and concerned about social injustice and discrimination that is Google, defined by the Oxford languages there thing. Yeah, what is or is not social injustice is tricky and discrimination too, because that becomes a quantity that is then determined based on your social position, which is often based on factors including race, gender, religion. Sometimes all three. There are others as well if you want to be cute about it. It gets murky. Jeffrey though needed this for the content, so Jeffrey of course had to milk it with commentary of their own. My view is, it's fair game, of course it is. But don't be surprised if more of your content's on Libs of TikTok account because basically your entire TikTok is a joke. Okay, so the destruction of normalcy, she seems to say, is wokeness. And then the students start laughing. Someone who uses and leverages their platform to try and ruin the lives of innocent people cannot define why she's doing it. She can't articulate what it's all about. Quite sad.